Uh, so to start. Do we start with a t-shirt? Do we start with talking about like Fleetwood Mac, <laughs> well, the, the great, one of the greatest bands of all time? Yeah, or? and I was gonna talk about romance, and this is I mean, unfortunately one of the most romantic things I've ever watched was this song. But for you, when you go into a rom-com, what is like the one romantic thing in a movie that you kind of think of? Like, is there one specific moment in film history that you kind of connect with when you're doing a rom-com? Uh, I, I don't know if I necessarily look at the history of other rom-coms necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did actually do some research into rom-coms ahead of doing this one, and it was a great excuse to go and watch some of the classics. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I, I fast discovered that Notting Hill is probably my the pinnacle of them for me. Uh, it's about connection, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we are all looking for in life, and sometimes in life we don't really realise where that right connection is yet, and we think it's on one certain path, and actually what ends up happening is something hits you out of the blue, and you go, oh, I know maybe, it's th maybe that's the avenue I should be exploring. And I think that that is true of this film, of our film, and I feel that, yeah, the, the beauty of rom-coms and why they work so well is, yes, you have got the heightened comedy, yes, you have got all the fun and regalia that goes on around that, but actually through the core, there should be this, this ultimate connection between people. Yeah, and I mean, you do have your 27 dresses moment because it's like a tree falls, they can't go anywhere, they're stuck. Yeah, they're stuck. Let's, let's, force this, let's force these two to <laughs> spend some time together. Yeah, it is also enemies to love. You have like a bunch of different tropes that you get yeah. to kind of play with. As an actor, when you are, are you aware of like, yes, I am playing this trope, but I have to also make it believable, or is it just something that kind of naturally progresses as you guys are working together? I don't think you worry about the, the trope element. For me, I mm -hmm. think... For me, it's, you've got to invest in the truth of what's what's happening, and and again, coming back to that that sort of term of connection, it's whether, you know, you you don't, although circumstance is important in a scene, it's also something you just need to eradicate and go, yeah. okay, well, well, what is what is driving these two people here, and 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 you know, James is a guy who is, you know, he's quite worldly, he's travelled a lot, that is his job to sort of to take in the world mm -hmm. and to you know be a nature and wildlife photographer. So as a result, like he is curious by people and curious by others, and I think that. He just realizes that Maddie's not necessarily happy with her lot, even though she thinks that she is. This 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 idea that she thought she created was was ideal for her is is not is mm -hmm. not right. And I think he he cuts through that. He's got quite a dry wit, and I think that leads him to being intrigued by her. I suppose. Yeah, and I, you do get to have uh, one of the cutest little rom com moments I think with the second meet cute, where she's running to the car and like oh, flips yeah, 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 over yeah, 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 you, yeah, and I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. so cute. When you get to like film those funny little moments, what is your favorite part of like that aspect of it? I mean, my my biggest fear there was probably to make sure I didn't run Lindsay Lohan over <laughs> in a nineteen seventies vehicle, <laughs> and she started running towards me. And you know, of course, there were some stunt people involved, but there was a bit of a pressure to to get that done <laughs> on, on point. Um, yeah, I mean that that, that it, it's. All of that is really great fun, and, and, and the thing about Lindsay, she's so great with the physical comedy. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of I followed her lead with all that sort of stuff, really. When it worked so well, like for me, with not even just rom coms, like romance movies in general, mm -hmm. there's always like one moment that really sticks out, like as my favorite of all time. When you were making this movie, what was your favorite moment that those two characters got to share? Oh, interesting. Uh, I felt that when we shot the scenes up on the cliffs. Mm -hmm. I felt that sort of encapsulated everything that people look for in rom-coms. You know, there was the the stunning backdrops, there was the intimacy, there was the sort of the the finally those characters were were almost like laying themselves bare with each other. I mean, like you know, this is what we really feel. The other thing about rom-coms is you don't necessarily get lots. The scenes are quite condensed. That's something that I noticed. It was a real skill to have to try and do so. But even even in that scene up on the cliff, they're actually quite short scenes, mm -hmm. so you don't have a huge amount of time to to get to the, the point you need to get to. But I felt that that really, in terms of the epic landscape and everything that sort of felt into, fed into what these two people were feeling, I think that encapsulated it pretty well. Yeah, and uh, you also get to be like, I kept watching this movie like, her friends kind of suck, because they do not recognize that she is struggling, but this man does, who just kind of gets to meet her. When you are an actor getting to work on that, what for you is the fun of getting to kind of dive into a character that is aware of the people around him and making sure that sh this random woman he just met is okay when no one else is? I think that, I mean, he's he's very comfortable in his skin. Mm. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, like he's a, he's a big observer. He takes in mm -hmm. a lot of the, that's around him. I think also sometimes it takes someone who's on the outside of your life who can sort of, you know, objectively look in at, at what is what is going on in your world. You know, sometimes the people that are the, the closest to you, they, you know, it's, it's so intertwined with, 
with everything that there's a certain tunnel vision with everything. Mm -hmm. But if someone who's who's slightly removed from that situation, they can come in with a completely different because they don't own any, uh, they don't have any any grip on the situation. They're not connected to anybody. They can have a very different view. And I feel that that was he he saw a kindred spirit. And I think maybe at at, the, at first there was uh, yeah he was a bit narky towards her. But I mm -hmm. think he. She went with his, his sort of snarky attitude, and as a result, the, you know, things blossomed. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me today. I interviewed you for Picard over the phone, so it's okay. nice to talk it's to okay. you in, nice. in person. Nice to meet you in person. <laughs>